Then England had their own version of Saturnalia, which they called Christ Mass. Now, it was more somber, but it was still uh, unlawful, okay? So, there would be open sex in the streets, sometimes there would be riots, sometimes murder. Uh, but basically, what it was, was where the poor would go around for 12 days during Christ Mass, and they would ramshack the rich people's houses, and they would use their stuff for 12 days. So they got to experience what it, what it was like to be rich and powerful, and to have the things that the kings and queens and all the... Uh, uh, landowners, you know, the landlords, all everything that they had earned. And so, the it was very popular. It was very popular for many years. They tried to outlaw it for about four years during uh, King Charles I and Oliver Cromwell and then Charles II when the monarchy was restored. Protestant Puritans lost England and Christ Mass was here to stay. So, Christ Mass is uh, Saturnalia, right? It's the English version of Saturnalia. And that's what they would do, right? They would use their stuff. Uh, the poor people would, would run around in, you know, roving bands of mobs and uh, go into rich people's houses, use their kitchens, use their farm equipment, use, you know, uh, eat whatever they had in their house. And, um, and then actually during these ceremonies, one of the poor peasants would be elected for the king. They would be king for 12 days, and they got to experience what it felt to have ultimate and absolute power because they would be the ones who dictated the order for the day. And uh, so after the 12 days were up, however, the peasant would be meta-commented. He would be JFK'd. So after 12 days of Christmas is up, the poor peasant king or queen would be put to death. So therefore, the one who initiated all the breaking in, used rich people's kitchens, tools, machinery, cars, electronics, etc., be put to death just like Jesus and death or the leader of the mob saves the sins of everybody in the crowd and nobody's responsible for the crimes of breaking property. It's a lottery where you're the luckiest man in the world for 12 days and then you're Marie Antoinette and King Louis the 16th guillotined to death and into poor peasant tyranny of sharing the wealth. St. Valentine, St. Patrick, St. Nicholas, it's all brainwashed from the Catholic Church. St. Martin Luther King, St. Fred Hampton, St. Gandhi, St. Malcolm X, St. Huey Newton, St. Tupac are all better sounding saints. Jesus the Christ was even questionable character too. Did he even exist? You got 20 different religions that have some sort of Jesus Christ and all of his myths are included in their own. Halloween, um, you know, the Day of the Dead. Rob Schneider was born on Halloween, and so was Will Smith, Peter Jackson, and Vanilla Ice. And so really it would make more sense of rocking Vanilla Ice or watching some Peter Jackson, uh, Goblin, Hobbit, Hobbit movies, Frodo, Frodo Baggins, um, Will Smith, right, movies, The Pursuit of Happiness. Some Rob Schneider movies is funny, right? Instead we got slutty goblins, slutty vampires, slutty witches, but actually, you know, we should keep the sluts. We could be a slutty Vanilla Ice, be a slutty Will Smith, Peter Jackson, Rob Schneider. <laughs> so, so Halloween, you know, that makes sense because you're celebrating a birthday. But on Halloween, the dead are going to be coming back to life to haunt us in their nightmares like zombies. So we got to dress up like the dead and wicked slutty nurses to scare those dead ancestors back into hell or to mock them or something. <laughs> or maybe we dress like them so they feel welcome. Hey, we're just like you. And then we celebrate the dead by asking everybody in the neighborhood for one or two pieces of candy for socialism. Right, how everybody gives a little and everybody gets a lot just like true universal health care should have been if we had a public option. So thanks a lot, Obama. Your socialism sucks. Halloween is so important uh, to Americans. We spend $6 billion on it every year. It's the second biggest holiday behind Christmas. Halloween. And Halloween came from the Celtics, right? It's the Celtic New Year. Samhain. Uh, also like Sam Hine. Samhain. It's a seasonal holiday, just like the Green Corn Festival, the Wampanoags, and the Halloween to the Celtics is called Samhain, Samhain. By the Gaelic Irish, the Celtics have been celebrating it for 2,000 years. Trick-or-treating came from the combination of Geisen and Solon. In the medieval Britain, Solon was when poor peasants' kids dressed up in costumes and they'd pray for the souls of the departed for your dead relatives in exchange for soul cakes. So in exchange for food, they would pray for your dead. Geising was when... Folks would go door-to-door -door reciting poetry, singing or telling jokes in exchange for money, food, and wine. So guising is sort of 
um, begging, but not really. It's doing, we'll sing a song, we'll recite some poetry, we'll tell you a joke, give us some money, some food, some wine. Uh, so going door to door, disguises, reciting Bible verses for bread. So that's, that's where Halloween, um, comes from, right? The Samhain, the Celtics, Sandheim. Salween, Salween, it's spelled Samhain, but it's supposed to be pronounced Salween. So, on Samhain, it's a Celtic um, seasonal, right? So, all the seasons, spring, fall, winter, and summer should all be celebrated. Um, behind Christmas, Halloween is the second largest commercial holiday in America, $6 billion. I already said that. Um, so, the point, right? We dress as dead. Dead people, souls, spirits, ghosts. They don't zombify, reanimate, and get us, take us over. Something Some folks think Samhain. Sam Hain was his Celtic New Year. Um, actually, how Halloween? Okay, so it's Samhain, right? Samhain, but then the Roman Catholic Church shifted All Saints Day to November first, and all uh, November second was All Souls Day. So then all these Day of the Dead and All Souls Day, All Saints Day, all became one Halloween, right? Hallowed, hallowed, hallows ween, hallowed ween. <laughs> um, Halloween. That's where it came from, the Catholic Church. So. Samhain, during Samhain or Samhain, bonfires would be lit. The cows were taken from their summer pastures and slaughtered. Uh, they believed in nature's spirits. They believed the dead were coming on Celtic Halloween to come and sit down with the living and eat at their dinner tables. They would even have, uh, they would set the table for these dead to come sit and talk to them. All Souls Day, All Saints Day by the Catholic Church eventually merged with Samhain, Samhain, and now... Uh, become Halloween on October 31st. Halloween is as clear as mud. Ishtar Easter contributes to the clusterfuck that we know now as Christmas. Ishtar was also known by her biblical name, Simi Ramus. Was, she was the widow of Nimrod. She was called the Queen of Heaven and claimed to have been impregnated by Nimrod through the rays of the sun. Later had a son by the name of Tammuz who had a miraculous birth on December 25th. The weeping of Tammuz is Lent. Pagans believe that Nimrod was reincarnated as Tammuz, and so Easter Ishtar married her son Tammuz. Pagan sun worshippers celebrated the birthday of the reincarnate sun god on December 25th. Scripture is very clear that we are not to celebrate this particular holiday. The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead the dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings to other deities that they may promote uh, provoke me to anger. This is Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 18. The passage above is obviously referring to making Christmas cookies and leaving those cookies in the glass of milk for Nimrod's widow Easter who was called the queen of heaven. The only difference is now those offerings are left for Santa aka Satan himself. Let's move on and read another passage from scripture. Thus says Yahweh, do not learn the way of the Gentiles and do not be dismayed at the signs of the heaven for the Gentiles are dismayed at them for the customs of the peoples are vanity for one cuts a tree out of the forest the works of the hand of the workmen with the axe they deck it with silver and with gold they fasten it with nails and with hammers and it not move. Jeremiah 10 verse 2-4 to four. It's referring to the cutting down of the Christmas tree Putting it on a tree stand, decorating it. Once you learn why it become customary to use an erect evergreen tree, is pointed in, decorated with big red balls. You realize the extent of the perversion of this holiday. The erect tree symbolizes Nimrod's erect masculinity. The tree was evergreen because evergreen trees are full of life, just like Nimrod's dick. The tree was pointed at the end, just like Nimrod's dick. The big red balls that dangle off the tree. Well, you get the picture. This holiday is perversion at best. <laughs> Every sun god was born on December 25th. Uh, Amun Ra, Horus, Mithra, Tammuz, Zeus, born on December 25th. Zeus! Zeus is born on December 25th. Apollo, Zeus's son, which is Hercules. No. Apollo, no. <laughs> Dionysus. Um... So, there's one day that the Messiah was not born, it was December 25th. He definitely was not born on that day, because all these other gods are born on here. No fucking way he was born the same day, right? So, in fact, the scripture is quite clear that the Messiah was born in late September or early October, on the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. <laughs> so, Jesus is actually born um, 
uh, on the first day of the Feast of the Tabernacles, whatever that is. So Amun-Ra, Horus, Mithra, Temuz, Zeus, um, lots of gods are actually born on December 25th. Christmas, the whole thing is just one big clusterfuck of so many different cultures that come from all over the place. Essentially just the party that Jesus was born, right? And the party has just changed and turned into a sort of a life of its own. Um, it's created its own thing. It's mostly a pagan midwinter holiday, so it's a celebration of the winter solstice. Happens 21st to the 22nd, or 21st or 22nd for three days to the 24th or 25th. So the winter solstice, that's where Christmas comes from. It's in the northern hemisphere. This is when the day is shortest, the night is longest. It's an important weather game changer, setting the whole system backwards. Okay, so the celebration of the winter solstice in the winter northern hemisphere, that's why we celebrate Christmas. And the Protestant program, the uh, Puritans, they fucking hated Christmas, just like Fred Phelps. So the pilgrims never celebrated Christmas. They charged five shillings fine for anybody who partied on December 25th. It was illegal in America to celebrate Christmas until 1840. Germans brought the Christmas tree over to America. The white Anglo-Saxon Protestants attacked the Germans and the Irish in Louisville in 1855 in the Know Nothing Riots. Mitchell was born on December 25th. Lots of gods were born on December 25th. Christmas was a pagan holiday. And that's why Puritans fucking, you're going to go to, it's not a holiday to them, it's a hell a day. And you're going to go to hell if you celebrate these things. Christmas came from Saturnalia, Roman holidays of Saturnalia, and the January Collins, Callens, K-A-L-E-N-D-S. Saturnalia featured many of the things we currently associate with Christmas. Large meals, holly, mistletoe, gift given in abundance. There's no way anyone was going to convince newly Christianized Romans to give up their holiday celebrations, so they became a part of the new holiday of Christmas, a day to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Saturnalia was an ancient Roman festival in honor of the deity Saturn held on December 17th of the Julian calendar and later expanded with festivals through December 23rd. The holiday was celebrated the sacrifice at the temple of Saturn in the Roman Forum in a public banquet followed by a private gift giving continual partying in a carnival atmosphere that overturned Roman social norms gambling was permitted and masters provided table service for their slaves the poet Catalyst called it the best of days in Roman mythology Saturn was an agricultural deity who was said to have reigned over the world in the golden age where humans enjoyed the spontaneous bounty of the earth without labor in a state of social egalitarianism the revelries of Saturnalia were supposed to reflect the conditions of the lost mythical age, not all of them desirable. The Greek equivalent was the Cronia Saturnalia, is a festival of light leading in the winter solstice, which abundance, uh, the abundant presence of candles symbolizes the abundance and the quest for knowledge and truth. The renewal of light and the coming of the new year is celebrated in the later Roman Empire at the Dies Natalis of Sol Invictus, which is the birthday of the unconquerable sun on December 25th, which Marcus Aurelius practiced. The popularity of Saturnia continued until the 3rd and 4th centuries AD, and as the Roman Empire came under Christian rule, some of its customs may have been influenced the seasonal celebrations surrounding Christmas and the New Year. Saturn, rebirth of the sun god. Saturn, priest, tree. Saturn, priest, carried trees. Germans, evergreen tree. Roman date worship. Saturn, December 22nd, the sun god died and then rose from the dead three days later to increase daylight. This wild celebration and partying. Celebration and partying bring tree into the house. Represents life. Life in the house. Pagans believe they are bringing life into the house. What in the fuck are you all celebrating?